very distinguished principal officers of the Senate, distinguished senators, with your kind permission also, I want to recognize distinguished Senator Engineer Aisha Dahiru, who is the senator representing my constituency, Adamawa Central, together with the two senators representing Adamawa State, Senator Cliff Ishaya Abbo and Senator Bainos Deodayero. With your kind permission also, I would like to recognize Senator Philip Tanimo Aduda, the senator representing the FCT, where I spent three and a half years as a public officer. With your kind permission, Your Excellency, I want to also just mention that Senators Ahmed Hassan Barata, who was a senator in the Seventh Assembly, has graciously escorted me to this hall, together with Senator Ahmed Abu Bakar, who was a senator of the Eighth Assembly. Also together with Honorable Musa Tanko Abari, who was a member of the House of Representatives, representing the FC 15 when I finished my second tenure. And uh, with all, and uh, during the eight-year period, I worked very closely with members of the National Assembly through the uh, House Committee uh, on Foreign Affairs as well as the Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs. And we were able to take Hajj to the point where it is now. And of course, I, I, was, I didn't do it alone. I got tremendous support from members of the National Assembly and from members of the Executive. I do recall that distinguished Senator Adua, Odua was one time Minister of Aviation and she knew the kind of support she gave me with all the airline flights and so on, and I am forever grateful. Man. I also recall that Senator Solomon Adewe, when he was in the House, and was the chairman, and was the chairman of the, I think it is a, the watchdog, Public Accounts Committee. Initially, I didn't understand him, but I'm forever grateful to you because he told me, he said that what we are doing here is to protect you from going to jail. And really, it has helped us as public officers. Thank you very much, sir. So after my eight-year work as the chairman of the pioneer chairman of the National Hatch Commission, uh, Mr. President graciously nominated me to serve as a minister during his first tenure. And I got the opportunity to come into this all the chambers and I was screened here and eventually I was appointed minister and then uh, assigned the portfolio of the minister of the FCT. And I found the assignment in the FCT with your kind permission, Your Excellency, very interesting because as you all know, the Federal Capital Territory is a creation of law and all activities in the FCT are governed by law. But most importantly, the National Assembly also served as the National Assembly of the FCT, going by Section 299 of the Constitution, where the FCT was regarded as if it were a state. So during this period, uh, quickly and briefly, uh, we spent a lot of time with my team trying to rediscover the FCT and take it back to the threshold of what the founding fathers envisaged when the FCT was created. And I think it is with appreciation that we should acknowledge the past military rulers because their decision to establish a center of unity for all of us is something that they have bequeathed to this great nation. So in the FCT, we came at a time when the resources were not adequate. And we came at a time when the public perception of the typical FCT officer was not good. So I, I and my team spent tremendous amount of time 
to see what we could do. And we identified that the greatest thing we needed to do was to look at the infrastructure. And in doing so, we looked at infrastructures that we felt would provide the greatest benefit to the largest number of people. So we targeted the road network system, the railway, and to a certain extent also we targeted water supply. And that is why for those of you that were in the 8th Senate, you will recall that in May of 2015, if you were to enter Abuja from the airport axis, you would have meandered through so many detours because so many of the bridges were not completed. So we targeted that, completed all the bridges, and they made sure that at least from that sector of the city, you could enter it seamlessly without any problem. And then we put up a bridge that was linking the main arterial road from the airport into the city, which is called Bill Clinton Bridge. And now it's there. When you drive there, you, you think it has been there all the years. But in so doing, I want to really uh, pay tribute to one of my predecessors as minister, who is seated in this hollow chamber, Senator Alero, because he was the person that made sure that the master plan that incorporated the airport expressway was initiated, and that is why you have that 10 lane uh, road there, and we are eternally grateful to you, sir. So, ha having t tackled the airport arterial road, we looked at the entry point from the Kubwa. Niger State Axis through the Zuba and thereafter also we completed a number of bridges and now it is there. The one that was took some time is entering Abuja through the Nasarawa State, through the Nyanya AYA Axis. We completed Goodlord Jonathan Expressway, opened up the area and the whole idea is that uh, we, we envisage that by so doing it will make it easier for all the hundreds of thousands of commuters that live in the satellite towns to make it easy for them to come into the city. And then, of course, it's public knowledge that we completed the Abuja light rail, which was on, on the drawing board and was under construction for quite some time. And basically, we did that by making sure that the project was funded. And it's now a done deal. And we do hope that the Nine Senate will approve the pending order from pending uh, request from the Ministry of the FCT for the approval of the foreign loan that will enable the FCT procure the relevant coaches. But all the railway stations, 12 of them along the corridor have been. So uh, finally, without taking too much of your time, sir, we realize also that a city like Abuja, for it to be a city of our dream, and also to make it one of the best cities in the world, and the first seat in Africa, we had to go back to the basics and ensure that everything was done according to the rule of law. Land administration was a huge challenge. It reached a point whereby if you had a land document, you were not sure whether it was genuine or not genuine. And we had so many problems of double allocations and all this, which I'm sure some distinguished members are aware. So we revolutionized the land administration and set up a system that made sure that there was proper synergy by all the land departments. It took some time, but at the end of the day now, I can assure the general public that any document you get from the Ministry of the FCT that is land-related, you can go to sleep because you know it is genuine. And we also created a system of alternative dispute resolution with respect to land matters because we realized that there were litigations in the court, some of them 20 years old, and we realized that at the end of the day, everybody suffers. The litigant suff suffers because of the fees, and the city suffers because as long as a land is not... Uh, Honorable Minister, yes. you have... Uh, there are a lot of questions to be asked. So I will, um, I will ask... Particularly, I didn't mention the Senate President, but he has been extremely helpful to me during all the years that I had mentioned that I was in the Hatch Commission and even during my first tenure uh, in the Ministry of the FCT. And of course I want to thank Mr. President who have found it, uh, who found me worthy out of so many qualified candidates from my state to reappoint me to come for this screening. And finally, 
I cannot complete this address without acknowledging the support I got from Senator Dino Melaye, who was my chairman when I was minister in the FCT. He has a tremendous knowledge and passion for Abuja, and I worked very closely with him. I want to also thank Senator O.K. Jeff Emanuel, who was a member of the House uh, when he was. If you agree that by association I am a member, I will appreciate if I enjoy it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much for that presentation. Now, distinguished colleagues, I, I can see that this club of National Assembly membership is becoming very popular. So you are welcome. Senator Mohamed Adumalero. FCT, my successor, and now also a ministerial nominee. Mr. President, I think the nominee has appeared before the Senate almost three times. First, when he was appointed as chairman of the Hajj Commission, he was screened by a committee of the Senate, and he was passed. Secondly, in 2015, when he was nominated as Minister of the Federal Republic, he appeared before us here in this hallowed chamber. We screened him, we asked him several questions, and he answered them eloquently. Mr. President, from what he said, he gave us his uh, performance as chairman of the uh, Hajj Commission. He equally abridged his performance as minister of FCT. Mr. President, there is no point we continue to do. No. That's the end. No. Mr. Mr. President, I don't think there is any need for us to delay asking him to go. He has done, he has done very well. Uh, he has mentioned critical infrastructure that is needed in FCT. And what impressed me most, Mr. President, all abandoned infrastructure he inherited. He continued with them and he completed quite a number of them. And he also decided to extend development at the satellite towns. And that's why people are no longer living in the city. The city is now decongested. People are now going to live in satellite towns. Mr. President, not only that, water supply is very, very critical to a city like Abuja. When I was minister, I did my very best to complete phase three and phase four of the uh, water treatment plant. And from what he said, he was able to complete it when he became Minister of FCT. There are so many things that need to be said, but I pleased with my colleagues, from, particularly from the other side. No objection. Here yeah, from this side too. Order, order. I'm sure. Order. I'm, I'm sure there will be no objection. So, Mr. President, with your kind permission, I, 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 I want you to put the question. Let the nominee take a bow and go. Thank you very much. Senator Ishatu Dahiru Amir. Mr. President, sitting in chair, my distinguished uh, colleagues, I would like to use this opportunity to say to my colleagues a very big thank you and to reiterate to them that Adama Kokos will forever remain grateful for this. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to me now. Go ahead. For the support. That uh, for the support being afforded to us right from the inception of this uh, ninth Senate. Yes. My nominee 
Let me start by congratulating you for being renominated by Mr. President to be the Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You have proved to Mr. President that your initial nomination was not a mistake. And for those of us who know you years back, are always proud of your record because wherever you walk, you leave a track record of integrity, landmark of fairness, equity and justice to all of, to everyone. Mr. President, sitting in chair, my distinguished colleagues, this is one Nigeria, Nigerian who is down to act. This is one Nigerian who is, uh, who is, who, who is, um, uh, who, when a minister, during his uh, ministerial uh, dura uh, this thing, duration, he drives in a convoy of only two vehicles. This is one, this is one Nigerian who is a silent achiever. My distinguished colleague, this is, he is a rare Nigerian. So at this point, Mr. President, sitting in chair, my distinguished colleagues, having been screened so many times by this, by this uh, distinguished uh, hollow chamber, I would really appreciate and crave the indulgence of my distinguished colleague to accord him all the privileges he deserves. Thank you. Thank you. Senator representing Adam South. Today I'm a proud member of this National Assembly because the candidates coming from a state is a product that everybody can see is well packaged is well qualified, does not require to be marketed. <laughs> Mr. President, I believe the CV we received today, if we had got it yesterday, there would have been no need to even ask him to even make any statement. Because this is very, very comprehensive. And the fact that Mr. President, the President of the Federal Republic, President Buhari, found him suitable, found him competent, only 11 out of the more than 50 senators that, uh, ministers that served to be renominated, indicates that he has performed very well to the satisfaction of Mr. President. Therefore, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues, Colleagues, I say let's accord this competent gentleman all the privileges that he deserves. Thank you. Senator. As you can see, from both sides of the aisle, this side and this side, this Senate unanimously agreed that this illustrious son of Adamawa State, let me tell you, Mr. President, this CV is just an abridged version. If you bring complete CV, we will be reading it like in volumes. <laughs> this is just an abridged version. As you can see that from this side of the aisle and from that side, our, this our illustrious son has built bridges over time. The shout of bow and go is even coming more from PDP. I follow my colleagues from Adamawa State and indeed the entire Senate to ask our brother from Adamawa State to please take a bow and go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> no, I have not completed it. <laughs> <laughs> is it the wish of the Senate that the nominee takes a bow and go. I've not put the question yet. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. Take a bow and go.
Order, order. Order. Guys, 